Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Kevin Lohenry, and I am the Associate Dean for Graduate Student Affairs at the Keck School of Medicine and the Director of the PA program as well. And on behalf of the faculty and staff, we want to welcome you to the White Coat Ceremony for the Class of 2022. We are very pleased that so many family members, partners, spouses, and friends have joined us virtually to honor our students. As Director of the Division of PA Studies, I have the distinct privilege of working alongside an incredible group of people who have dedicated themselves to our students. I witnessed the weekend and late evening work as they prepare for lectures, examinations, and all of the daily requirements of supporting our students. This starts with our admissions team who processed each of your loved one's applications. They reviewed the hard work that these students put in to get into this program. And it includes all of our faculty and staff who give so much to this program beyond, beyond what any director could expect on a day-to-day -day basis. This was particularly apparent this past year as we all encountered this worldwide pandemic. Last March, our team was planning our annual advocacy trip to Washington, DC. And I was planning to visit colleges with my youngest daughter when we learned that we'd be teaching online the remainder of the spring semester. And everything changed, literally everything, except for the spirit of these students and this team. Each and every member of the program took this tragedy and adapted their personal and professional lives to keep fighting on. I am incredibly proud to be part of a program, institution, and profession that has done just that. All across the world, healthcare providers have just continued to go to work, risking their personal and family's lives to save others. And the class of 2022 is no different in their attitude towards their future profession. In fact, many have continued to seek opportunities to serve our fellow neighbors, even while feeling the pressure of exams and their upcoming clinical rotations. We have much to be proud about as we move into this next phase of their journey. Today is a special day as we're here to recognize the class of 2022 for this very important milestone. 17 months ago, this class began their journey in orientation with the goal of becoming a PA and they have endured significant sacrifice more than I think any class in my history to get to this point in their education. They have spent countless hours in the classroom and at home studying anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, clinical and behavioral medicine. They have learned much about medicine, but still have much to learn. They have cared for many patients, but they have many more to see before they graduate. And they are about to leave for the next phase of their education. I would like to share a few brief observations about this group of students. This class is driven to succeed, led by an incredibly energetic and passionate leader in Ms. Heidi Amundsen. They are detail-oriented, focusing on every minute detail of the diseases and treatments that are taught throughout the curriculum. This class has led in many ways, including the continued development of a student-run clinic developed through an interprofessional collaborative with students from medicine, pharmacy, occupational, and physical therapy. They have served our neighbors experiencing chronic homelessness on the streets of Los Angeles County. This includes various drives to provide food, clothing, and most recently, tents for those that were experiencing homelessness during the pandemic. This class has also participated in the community health fair to support local communities, and they have developed a monthly pipeline recruitment group that seeks to provide economic and educationally disadvantaged students from area communities with support in their journeys to become healthcare providers. They took part in an interdisciplinary symposium, the Carnal of Love on Skid Row, and conducted both a book drive for Children's Hospital of Los Angeles and did hurricane relief for those suffering in Puerto Rico. This past month, following a tremendously stressful year, members of this class jumped in to vaccinate our frontline healthcare workers at Keck. This was done the day after finals were complete, when many would typically want to go home and rest, but instead they jumped at the opportunity to serve. So as you can clearly see, this group is well on their way to making a tremendous impact in our world. Today, we're fortunate to hear from several inspirational leaders who have been leaders in healthcare, education, and social justice. The class of 2022 requested these people to represent them at their ceremony due to the admiration that they have for their work and the work for that these leaders have done for our world, for our campus community, and for our profession.
This past March, when the world turned upside down, I had the incredible privilege to serve with Dean Mosqueda's team in the handling of various challenges of the pandemic. I left my PA family to work in the COVID-19 Project Management Center, where I interfaced with leaders from all aspects of USC to help our institution and Dean Mosqueda deal with this new challenge. I had served alongside Dr. Mosqueda when she was our department chair, but this role was different in that she was now Dean over the entire Keck School of Medicine. Throughout those weeks, I continued to be impressed with her humanity, her leadership, her steadfast commitment to the community, to our patients, to our students, and to our Trojan family. She was adamant about doing the right thing for the right reasons, and it is only fitting that we have the honor of her remarks for the class today. Dean Mosqueda stepped down in September and returned to focus on her passion, solving elder abuse, and the institution was privileged to have her lead at that office for three years. She is a graduate of Occidental College and USC. She graduated with her medical degree from the Keck School of Medicine of USC, and then completed her internship, residency, and fellowship all at USC. She is a world-renowned leader in elder abuse and geriatrics and a fantastic fan of the PA profession. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Laura Mosqueda. Hello, it is a joy and an honor to celebrate you, our wonderful physician assistant students class of 22 at this white coat ceremony. And I am happy to be doing this with the knowledge that you have family, friends, and faculty cheering you on as well. These important people provide a strong foundation for your success and happiness, so please remember to say thank you. And on a personal note, this class has been a wonderful source of inspiration and support to me. So I am particularly happy to be here with you today, even though it's virtual, and glad for the chance to say thank you to you. The white coat you received today is a symbol that represents the extraordinary privilege and solemn responsibility that comes along with not just the ability, but also the call to provide healing and comfort to our fellow human beings. This ceremony was founded to embrace professionalism and humanism and to place emphasis on what is at the heart of all we do, fostering the sacred bond between a clinician and patient. This coat will inspire trust and faith in your abilities. Patients will look upon you with hopefulness in your capacity to heal and treat their conditions. At first, you may feel uncomfortable, even like a fake. So it's good that you have some time to get used to wearing that white coat. But remember that the white coat also means that you have a responsibility to treat people with the utmost respect and care. And I trust and know that each and every one of you will uphold that responsibility. Throughout your career, you will not only gain firsthand knowledge by working with your patients, but also you'll learn valuable lessons from your patients. In order to be successful, you will need to see the patient who's sitting in front of you as a person, an individual with their own family history and distinct preferences when it comes to treatment options, and a unique background that will inform their current state of health as well as their choices. You'll be a good clinician when you listen carefully, actively, and respectfully. As you know, providing medical care is a team sport. Once we have the knowledge and know the rules and feeling comfortable with our book learning, it's time to put it all into practice. And it's pretty daunting prospect. And one of the many reasons that I'm so relieved to practice with a myriad of healthcare professionals, nurses, pharmacists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, psychologists, and others. And I can tell you that as a physician, I can't remember a time when I did not co-practice with a physician assistant, a fact of which I'm both proud and immensely grateful. Many of the time I've turned to my practice partner and team members for help and for advice. And many of the time a patient was disappointed because I'm the one who came through the door instead of the physician assistant that I work with. Now at our best, I think we're a combination of scientist, advocate, teacher, counselor, and healer. At our best, we are confident enough to empower our patients to fully participate in decisions about their health and health care. At our best, we bring out the best in our team members. At our best, we take care of ourselves, understanding that care of others isn't possible without self-care. At our best, we are leaders in our community, contributing to the health and well-being of those in the world around us. 
course, there are going to be a lot of long, hard days ahead. But please take heart. As a person who's been practicing medicine for over 30 years, I've never lost my desire to practice medicine, to be a part of my patients' lives, to continue my research, to do a little bit of administrative work here and there, and to even teach once in a while. You are fortunate to be in a school surrounded by faculty and staff who nurture an atmosphere of support and community. Class of 22, I have such confidence in you and admiration for you, and I will be glad to have you as colleagues in the sooner than you think future. Fight on and heal on. Thank you very much, Dr. Mosqueda. Our next speaker is the current Associate Dean for Primary Care and Department Chair for the Department of Family Medicine. Dr. Janai Robinson took over when Dr. Mosqueda was promoted to the Dean's Office three years ago. She has quickly put her brand on the department with her passion for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Prior to joining USC, Dr. Robinson developed interdisciplinary teams and created innovative models to provide comprehensive primary care for underserved communities. She is a graduate of Stanford University and Morehouse School of Medicine. She completed her residency and fellowship at Harbor UCLA. She was recently appointed chair for the medical staff at Keck Medicine, and her leadership is evident in everything she gets involved with. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Janai Robinson. Hello, I'm Dr. Janai Robinson, chair of the Department of Family Medicine and associate dean for primary care for the Keck School of Medicine at USC. And on behalf of our entire department, I want to say congratulations on the occasion of your white coat ceremony. In our Department of Family Medicine, where our vision is that we are leaders in health and social justice for all, I want to commend all of the hard work and dedication that you have put in to get to this point in your training. In addition to your hard work, learning, and studying hard and supporting one another, you've also had to embark upon a journey to get yourself ready to prepare, to take care of people who will be very much in need during this unprecedented time of the COVID-19 pandemic that has been complicated by the civil unrest that we have witnessed this last year in reaction to the persistent ills of systemic racism that inflict significant suffering upon our communities of color. So I so appreciate and value not only the hard work you've put into your studies, but also your advocacy, your activism, and your determination to help make the world a better place through your collective action, as well as your individual pursuit to be the best physician assistant that you can be. Know that you are ready, know that you are well-trained for this next phase of your adventure, of your journey, and know how proud we are of you and how much you are needed in our communities. We are excited to see where you go next, what you will accomplish, and we wish you all the best. Know that you always have the Family Medicine family behind you and supporting you on this next phase of your journey, and we look forward to ce celebrating your continued achievements. Congratulations and fight on. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Our keynote speaker today is Ms. Michael Statler, who currently serves as president of the Physician Assistant Education Association. Ms. Statler has spent the last 40 years serving our country as a PA. She started out with the Surgeon Assistant Program at the University of Alabama, Birmingham in 1980, and spent the next 14 years working as a surgical PA in cardiac, ear, nose, and throat, and neurosurgery before becoming a PA educator. She has served in various leadership roles at Midwestern University in Glendale, Arizona, UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas, and Rosalind Franklin University in North Chicago, where she ultimately served as an associate dean for students. She was the first PA to serve as staff for the Physician Assistant Education Association, but left to rejoin education where she has her passion and incredible gifts to give. I had the distinct privilege of working alongside Ms. Statler while serving at Midwestern University prior to my arrival at USC. She and I worked hand in hand to serve that program. And this is where I first saw her in action as a teacher. She is a 5.0 teacher, which is like the Michelin scores for restaurants, top notch. 
a top tier teacher, a top tier leader, a top tier list maker, and one of the best quote makers in the universe. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Michael Staller. Well, thank you, Dr. Lowen Henry. Uh, I appreciate your invitation to come and speak as part of your White Coat Ceremony. The White Coat Ceremony <clears throat> marks a very important transition in your education from your didactic year into your clinical year. And so to get started, we have a little reminder of how you got to where you are today. At the time that you applied to the USC PA program, there were 886 applicants. There were 200 people who interviewed for a class of 60. And so it's an important reminder of everything that you have overcome to this point. It's also a good reminder that the days that are sometimes a little rough around the edges, that you are part of a very special group. As we think about the white coat, we also think about other aspects of PA history. As you well know, the roots of the profession are in the military, with the first class of PAs being Navy corpsmen at Duke's inaugural PA program. PAs being in the military are represented by this particular picture that was taken during PA week at my former program at Roslyn Franklin University, uh, just outside of Chicago, Illinois. But what our students are doing here, both of whom are military veterans, they are recreating a statue that is entitled Caregiver, or Lifesavers Then, Caregivers Now. And so again, it's an important reminder of the roots of the profession and all of the PAs that came before you and laid the foundation for where PA practice is today. While I was going through the vault, I uncovered uh, this picture at a time when Dr. Lo Henry and I, our paths intersected when we were both on faculty at the PA program at the Western University in Glendale, Arizona. This is from one of our white coat ceremonies from the PA class of 2007. And one thing you notice from this picture are all the smiles as people are celebrating this particular milestone in their education. Fast forward to white coat ceremony at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center this past year for the UT Southwestern PA class of 2022. We are in the midst of a pandemic, and so that pandemic has impacted so much of what we do in the day to day. And so we were still able to have our white coat ceremony, but we just needed to adapt to a virtual environment. Our students all came to the top level of our parking garage, where you can see in that bottom picture, there was a rack of white coats. There was a photo op in front of our UT Southwestern logo and the backdrop of our university hospital, all of us wearing our masks. And while it doesn't look like it, we are trying to do some social distancing as well. What I want to do in our time together is kind of a, a top 10 of some life lessons that I have learned along the way. Some of them uh, are my own lessons. Some of them I have gotten from former students. Some of the ones that I got from former students, they just outright stole from me in the first place. But in any event, it's a compilation of some life lessons that I hope you'll be able to use as you continue along your journey uh, uh, to become PAs. So our first number 10 is a top 10 buried in a top 10. And as you look at this list of items that are listed here, these characteristics, there is no talent required for any of these. Being on time, having a positive attitude, being coachable, having a good work ethic will all define you as you get ready to start your clinical rotations very soon. Number nine on the list is about managing your time. And I'd be willing to bet that you're very familiar with the construct of drinking from the fire hose, that there is so much that comes at you at very high speeds when you are in PA school, but you can't study 24 seven. And I'd be willing to bet that you've all learned that at one point or another over your past uh, didactic phase of your curriculum. You have to take time to rest, to recreate, 
to connect with your family and your friends, to play with the dog and the cat, to go for a walk or get some exercise. By doing that, you can, you can take a step back from your studying. And then when you go back and you start to study again, you're just in a much better mindset to be able to absorb new material. Number eight on the list is having a good support system. You can't do this by yourself. You need your classmates, you need your family and friends to support you. And as you're carving out time to be with them, they can help support you in what you know that sometimes can be some challenging days that you have in the PA program. Number seven on the list, and I am reminded of one of the neurosurgeons that I work with in my former life as a surgical PA. And so Dr. McGurr used to say, perfection is the enemy of good. And so that would be my recommendation to you as well, to not strive for perfection. Don't be afraid of failure. One of my former students said, failure is where the learning opportunities happen. Find them, use them. And, and along the way, you're just gonna to continue to grow your skills as a PA. Number six on the list is one of my favorite cartoons. And it is about embracing the boundaries of your comfort zone. And so what you see in the top images is the heart is stretching out the comfort zone and the brain says, I am not comfortable with that. And I can tell you from personal experience that this is one that I have struggled with quite a bit myself. Because once I got to the edges of my comfort zone and was by definition then uncomfortable, I didn't like that. It was like, ooh, back away. That's potentially scary stuff. But what I have learned, and it's taken a lot of time and a lot of practice, is you will survive that and you will thrive and you will learn and you'll get on the other side and you will have learned something new and you will have expanded your comfort zone. And so once you begin your clinical rotations, you're going with a great foundation of everything that's come before, but you're going to have things that are going to stretch you in new, in new ways. And so try to embrace that and know that you will survive it and you'll come out on the other side in a better place. Number five is about forgiveness. And so as you're stretching that comfort zone, as you're learning to accept that you don't have to be perfect, you will make mistakes. And so to use an example of, you know, basketball season is getting ready to start. So what do basketball players do when they commit a foul? That hand goes up. And so we don't do that in, you know, off the basketball court. But the point of that is if you make a mistake, you, you just own that mistake. There's no excuses. And step back from that and go, okay, what can I learn from this so I don't repeat this mistake again in the future? And then let yourself off the hook. All too often, I hear students that continue to beat themselves up when they've made a mistake. And that the more that you can let yourself off the hook, the, the easier it will be to get past those mistakes and eyes forward moving ahead. And while you forgive yourself, you also want to forgive others. I can tell you from personal experience is when you are on your clinical rotations that you may get feedback from some of your clinical preceptors that's a little rough around the edges. Um, take what they're saying, Learn, hear what they're saying, and maybe not the delivery of how the message is, is given, but what are they saying? What can I learn from that? And then let go of everything else. Moving to number four is asking for help. This is one that I tell students starting at the day of orientation. If you need help, ask for help whether it is something related to your academic coursework, whether it is something that is happening outside of school, if you need help, by all means, the best way for faculty to help you is before you get into a problem. Students oftentimes are resistant to this advice and they don't wanna ask for help for whatever reason. This is a large part because they see that as a potential weakness. Faculty see that as a strength. We see students who ask for help as a future clinician who will ask for help when they get into a problem with a patient or an uncomfortable or unknown situation that they don't know the answers to. This particular image 
comes from the book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. It's a delightful book full of all sorts of life lessons. And so on the image here, what is the bravest thing you've ever said? Help, said the horse. And so as a reminder, not a weakness, it is a strength. Number three is looking for solutions. All too often when things don't go well, it's a tendency is to complain about what the problem is without looking for how do we solve the problem. One of the courses that I took in, uh, during my master's degree was on Italian Renaissance art. And the professor told the story of a rock quarry or marble quarry in Florence, Italy, that had pre-cut this piece of marble. And they took it to various sculptors that were in the area. And they all said, it's too narrow, it's too, it's too, it's too tall, it's, it's too wide. There was just something wrong with it. And they, they finally took the piece of marble to Michelangelo. And Michelangelo said, okay, I'll take it. And he made David. And so he looked at this piece of marble that everybody else saw the obstacles and saw the barriers. And he saw the hidden figure hidden, the figure hidden within, and saw the opportunity. And so that was one of those lessons, you know, some things just stick with you over time. That when I run into challenges, the first thing that comes to mind, I go, where's David? Where is the solution? How do we, how do we figure out a way uh, to resolve and come up with a solution to our problem? This number two, trust the process. I have said this, so many times that former students think that I came up with this phrase. I did not came up with this phrase. It's, I don't have any ownership of this, but I use this. This reminds me of a passage from Ecclesiastes in the Bible about a time for everything and everything for its time. Everything that you got in your didactic phase of your curriculum prepares you for where you go now. And as you get ready to tackle your clinical rotations, they will prepare you to successfully transition into clinical practice as a PA. So trust that you have everything that you need to move ahead uh, to this next phase of your education. And lastly, back to my Italian Renaissance art class. This is a quote attributed to Michelangelo, Ancaro Impara, I am still learning. And this was attributed to Michelangelo saying this when he was 87 years of age. You are lifelong learners as PAs. It is one of the reasons I love being a PA educator is I learn something new all the time. So as you start your uh, clinical rotations, go out there, embrace the boundaries of the comfort zone, be a sponge and soak up everything that you can. One more picture or two from the vault. This is also from Midwestern University. This was the PA class the next year of 2008. But here again, lots of smiles as they celebrate uh, receiving uh, their white coats. The last ones that I have are a little more personal. The top one is another personal favorite. Uh, one of the classes at Rosalind Franklin was an exceptionally tall class. And so I'm a little more vertically challenged. And so I had encouraged them to please work with me so I would be able to actually get their white coats on them. And then you see them all down below. So mission was accomplished. But the last thing that I leave you with is you start with your white coat today. But tomorrow is graduation. And we celebrate uh, that success as you complete uh, your program here at USC. So thank you again for your time and your attention. Best of luck to you as you start your clinical rotations. Congratulations on receiving your white coats. Thank you, Ms. Statler, for your time and talent today. As you can see, she's a world famous list maker. At this time, we're gonna ask the students to take the physician assistant oath written by the American Academy of Physician Assistants. This will be led by Mrs. Corinne Feldman, Director of Didactic Education, street medicine provider, and clinical assistant professor of family medicine. I, I pledge to perform, perform the following duties, duties with honesty and dedication. I will hold as my primary responsibility the health, 
safety, welfare, and dignity of all human beings. I will uphold the tenets of patient autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. I will recognize and promote the value of diversity. I will treat equally all persons who seek my care. I will hold in confidence the information shared in the course of practicing medicine. I will assess my personal capabilities and limitations, striving always to improve my medical practice. I will actively seek to expand my knowledge and skills, keeping abreast of advances in medicine. I will, I will work, work with other members, members of the healthcare team to provide compassionate and effective care for patients. I will use my knowledge and experience to improve patient care quality and improve patient safety. I will work with other members of the healthcare team to provide compassionate and effective care for patients. I will use my knowledge and experience to contribute to improved community. I will respect my professional relationship with the physician. I will share and expand knowledge in the profession. These duties are pledged with sincerity and upon my honor. Everything is different this past year, so why not conduct the coating ceremony differently too? As you were all too keenly aware, the class decided to have their coats presented by their loved ones in the safety of their own homes. It has been a privilege to witness these alternative coating rituals while putting the videos together, and I hope you will enjoy them too. Reading the names of each student is Mrs. Jennifer Ramos, clinical instructor of family medicine and didactic faculty. Katrina Abelian. Alexandra Abreu. Ani Agarzarian. Camille Amparo. Heidi Amundsen. Alexandra Barbeau. Okay. Elaine Bau Heifel. Brittany Marie Campos. <laughs> Hannah Carvudo. Michelle Leonor Cassell. Sergio Cuauhtémoc Chávez. Francine Katrina Chen.
Ashley Clark. Start a little lower. Lanisha Cole. Okay. Anna Darren. Miriam Darzi. <laughs> Kersey Fadul. Douglas Goodgen. <laughs> Maisie Wang. Jonathan Hoda. Jax! Jax! <laughs> Angie Huang. Dong Wan Im. <laughs> Stacy Jung. Michael Kang. Monica Koshki. Zenia Cruz. Samantha Barcelona Lugmai. Laura Lamas Guzman.
Emily Lara. Michelle Dang Lee. Amy Lopez Rivera. Cindy Ma. Leora Matian. Emmeline Moritzen. Nicole McCann. Erin Elizabeth Morrill. Two, three, go. <laughs> Good. Candace Nasser. Christina Mai Win. Tran Le Win Gwen. Angela, no. Jocelyn Ochoa. Emmeline Oroz. Angelica Paroqua.
Jeez. Sabrina Pimentel. Francesca Reinish. <laughs> Robbie Ann Robinson. Naya Rodriguez. Rebecca Romero. Emily Sim. Tyson Smith. Argisht Saturian. Catherine Wong. Spencer Wong. Nicole Yadidi. Judy Yu. Leadership is an incredibly important component of the class experience. A lack of leadership creates chaos and confusion, but a strong leader can bring calm to the craziness of our educational process. Last year, the class of 2022 elected a very capable leader who has been asked by her class to represent them in this ceremony. I would like to thank Ms. Heidi Amundsen for her leadership during this tremendously difficult time. And please join me in welcoming her as she delivers her remarks. Buenos dias, me llamo Heidi Amundsen. Soy estudiante de Estudio Médico de USAC en los próximos minutos 
wait a minute, how'd this get in here? Okay, here we go. I will be inspecting for size, swim, symmetry, swelling, scars, atrophy, nodules. Wait a minute, this isn't right either. Okay, now I'm sure this one's right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty, staff, classmates, and Heather. Thank you for being here for our induction into the Brotherhood and Sisterhood of Medicine. As class president, I've been asked to say a few words during this presentation. And so like any good presentation in PA school, I wanted to include a pre and post assessment using Mentimeter, but don't worry, I was told by faculty that assessments are deferred for the purposes of this OSCE, I mean presentation. Now, like any good perfectionist, any good recovering perfectionist, I really struggle with what to say here. I had these grandiose plans of imparting some truly insightful and sage advice. But then I remembered that you would be getting plenty of that today from people much wiser than me. And I also remember Dr. Vallejo's motto, keep it simple. So that's what I'm gonna do, keep it simple. And what's simpler than saying please and thank you. So here's my pleas to you fellow 2022s and to myself. Please remember that we're not here to curse the darkness. We're here to light a candle. This has been a grueling 18 months, both in and out of the classroom. Our experience has been punctuated by moments of frustration and fear. And getting here to this moment has required an inordinate amount of gumption, grit, and sacrifice. And surely we will need to continue to employ those skills as we move forward with our clinical training during the pandemic because we will encounter more challenges. And there will likely be more moments of frustration and fear. But after you've had a chance to acknowledge those feelings and maybe curse the darkness a little bit, please light your candle. Be a beacon for others and use the light to do what you set out to do. Rise up in service and complete our PA training. And now for the thank yous. I wanna thank you, my fellow 2022s, for allowing me the honor of serving as your class president. I am humbled by the faith you've placed in me, which has sometimes amounted to more than I've placed in myself. I also wanna thank you for helping me, for helping each other get here. I had no idea that success in PA school was so crowdsourced. We've shared study materials, meals, dance moves. We've challenged each other to be better and work hard, but also play hard. Thank you for showing me that even when it seems like there's never enough time, there's always enough time for a KBBQ, a Jonas Brothers concert, or volunteering with Pipeline. And now to our faculty and staff. Saying thank you just doesn't seem like enough, but it's a start. We're so grateful for the tremendous amount of knowledge you have imparted to us, but we are perhaps more grateful for the innovation, grace, humor, and courage you've led us with during this time. Also, we know that you have lives outside of your teaching roles. You have families, babies, and fur babies, and patients, and yet you've managed to keep us feeling like we're the center of your universe. You've responded to emails at ungodly hours, You've given us lots of chocolate when we needed to pick me up. You let us cry in your office, a judgment-free zone, and you are our most constant cheerleaders. You're truly superheroes. And lastly, thank you to our loved ones. Your love and support are inextricably intertwined with our success. Every load of laundry you've helped with, every meal you've prepared, every hug you've freely given, every panicked phone call you've answered when we've been overwhelmed has helped us get here. This success is as much yours as it is ours. And I promise that once PA school is over, we'll be able to talk about something other than the mnemonics we've created to memorize the farm drug list. All right, I think I've kept the please and thank you simple enough. So congratulations 2022s, gracias por venir hoy, fight on and heal on. Thank you, Heidi. At this time, the class of 2022 would like to share a video that they put together of their experience over the last 18 months. Obviously, it's been an extraordinary time for them with everything that's been going on. And uh, this should give us some indication of what their past three semesters have been like so far.
everyone, congratulations. I have five tips, ready? Here we go. Stay humble and ask for help when you need it. Number two, be kind to yourself and to others. Number three, remember, you can always take three deep breaths if you need a quick reset um, or a pause. Number four, um, expect the unplanned um, and then just start where you are. Number five, what you need is already within you. Congratulations on making it to this phase of the uh, clinical rotation portion of our program. Uh, you've worked hard. I know that you're going to do an awesome job on your clinical rotations. Um, just remember to slow down. Um, remember to have all of your equipment with you at all times. Uh, remember to apply your clinical reasoning skills, apply your critical thinking skills. Um, and again, I can't wait to see you doing PCA number one. I'm so excited for all of you. Um, be safe, fight on, and protect yourself at all times. What defines a program? Is it the campus, the building, the classroom, or the paint? Is it the people, the students, the team that they embrace? Is it the culture, the passion, the effort to learn? Is it the grit and determination, the privilege they all earned? Instead, we will define a new approach to life and one day this will pass, we'll put aside our strife. This family will return to share this home again. This family so determined will help others to transcend. The quiet will replace itself with joyous laughs abound, and we will all return to this place to join on common ground. We'll know our purpose and passion, our why has kept us strong, We'll know we stuck together when everything else went wrong. The unity we feel strengthens us each day. Our brothers and our sisters ensure that none were led astray. Fight on. Heal on. We've got this now for sure. Just keep moving forward and we will all endure. Hey guys, today I want you to remember that perfect can be the enemy of good. I know today doesn't look like what you wanted it to look like, but you've worked so hard to be here. I hope that you still find joy and a sense of accomplishment in whoever you get to celebrate with today. I think you know my biggest pieces of advice going into clinic throughout our last three semesters together. Um, be bold, be brave, it's your education. Go seize it. I'll miss you. We are so excited for you to start your clinical year. Embrace this adventure. When you start your clinical year, remember these few things. Continue to guide your interview, hone in on your physical exam skills, and think outside the box. Expand those differentials. Jump right in. We know that you're ready. Congratulations and I look forward to getting to know you all more this clinical year. My wisdom for you is to paraphrase RBG, who said, it's sometimes good to be a little deaf. So be a little deaf to those rumblings or expressions of dissatisfaction that you may hear, but always, always remember to listen closely to your patients because they are the most important element in this part of your journey. Also celebrate your joys and those of your classmates. Remember the Trojan family is always here 24 seven and fight on. 
Hi, 22s. I am so excited for you all to start this journey in clinical rotations. Um, I truly believe that you all are white coat superheroes. The saying goes that not all superheroes wear a cape, and I believe that you will be the superheroes who take care of patients in this pandemic and over the course of the next year. Enjoy every minute of it. Be hungry for information. Be humble when taking care of patients. Wear that white coat with pride. It is an honor to be able to care for patients, and that is a symbol of it. And if your preceptor ever asks you what diagnostic test you want to order, you better say CBC. It's always the right answer. Bye everybody. Best of luck. Have a great year ahead. On behalf of our Trojan PA family, I want to thank you for joining us today for this special occasion. This class is truly special in that they have yet to tire of my comments, my words, my cheering or paternalistic guidance, and they actually asked if I would share a few closing remarks. So to the class of 2022, in many ways, you are an extension of our family to our team. And I took some reflective time over the holidays to consider what we had all been through this past year. I wrote a letter to my three children and beautiful wife that covered a few of these observations. And since you are family too, I'd like to share some of it with you. The tragedy and pain that so many have felt around the world will hopefully serve to remind us how far we have to go in so many ways. This past year has done more to educate us about the realities of our world and how badly some people are hurting. We are incredibly fortunate to have lived a life that has provided a strong education strong careers, strong family ties, and good fortune. These are gifts that we received or earned through hard work, determination, and luck. In my lifetime, I've had the opportunity to serve around the world as both a healthcare provider and as a service member in the Navy. In every country I visit, I see the same thing. Some have much, while others have little. Some have wasted their wealth, and some rose above poverty with incredibly hard work and passion. Some experience a different reality than we do, and for that, we should be incredibly grateful and generous. Over 80 million people on our planet have contracted COVID-19. Over 2 million on this planet have perished from this deadly disease. This is not a hoax. This is a reality for many, many people. The rally for us has been to hunker down in our homes, order food to our doorsteps and wait this out. For many, that is just simply not possible. Their homes are in the streets or shacks in our world. Their livelihood relies upon them serving others and they cannot teach or attend school from home. So they risk their lives in serving others. Class of 2022, you are servants. You have chosen to serve. You have chosen or have been called to a career that involves service to others. You all come from different backgrounds, different realities, different regions in the world, but you all join together with your brothers and sisters in white coats around the world to make the world a better place. When the call goes out, you will join them to heal, to save, to comfort. You will join them in seeing the worst that life has to offer and to experience the best that life can give us. The meaning of the white coat has forever changed in my mind. Here in the United States, we have over 20 million cases with over 350,000 deaths to date. Our county of Los Angeles is home to one of the worst periods in history and the meaning of the white coat has never been more obvious than now. Our brothers and sisters that are out there wearing this coat are taking care of people with this disease. They go to work fearful of contracting it themselves, but go anyways 
to serve humankind. In many instances, they have worked without time off for months on end to try and stop the devastation, to try and pro provide comfort to the people that are there in their care. The selflessness that they have showed is absolutely emblematic of the meeting of the white coat. A wise physician once told me the importance of taking off the white coat before I enter my home so that I can focus on my family without distraction from anxiety or fear related to the decisions I made in the care of my patients that day. But then mentally to put that white coat on as I exited the family home so that my focus could be on the people who sought my knowledge, experience, and compassion that day. The people you would encounter are calling on you for that focus, for that knowledge, for that compassion. They will put their lives in your hands and they trust you to do the right thing for the right reasons at the right time. Class, you have endured what is arguably the toughest time in modern history. You have made it to this point from grit, determination, passion, and what is probably love. Love for your dream, love for your family, love for your future patients and colleagues. We finally have some hope. The vaccine is the best news of the year and in short order, you will all be offered the opportunity to receive it. Thousands of healthcare providers are proudly showing off their vaccine pictures as they see the light in the darkness that is ahead. We still have a ways to go, but you are part of the solution to saving our planet. You have made the decision to join forces with an army of white-coated heroes who are doing their very best to walk in solidarity with their patients and communities. So just remember the army of white coats is big and strong. At every rotation, you'll be joining with physicians, PAs, nurse practitioners, nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, pharmacists, and other medical staff to fight this and other diseases together. There's an old African proverb that is written in our conference room at the campus that I think is particularly important given where you're heading to next week. Quote, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. You are not alone. And we are all very excited to see you move on to the next phase and know that you will all succeed. We have confidence in your preparation, and we look forward to sharing this phase with you throughout 2021. So class of 2022, congratulations and fight on.